Hey, what up? Alex R here, aka Lorcan, and I got a tutorial for you guys. It's been a long time since I've uploaded, and I'm sorry for that. I started with my studies in digital design at VFS, so things have been going pretty slow here on the channels and whatnot, as I have been swamped with work. So, let's get started with this little introduction to Expresso in Cinema 4D. So, we're just going to open the project file that you can download from the description below so download that and open it if you want to follow along if not then uh, just have fun yeah so we're just gonna open up this crusty, crappy espresso clock like so now don't freak out your layout won't look like this it will look like dun, 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 where is it standard there we go. So you're looking at this probably. If you're not, then go up to here, customization, window customization, layouts, standard. And now we're we're looking at the same thing. So let me just show you what's going on here. Basically, we have one object here which I have named the controller, which is locked to the X position, so it can slide on the X axis. And oh, what have we got here? So basically, as this slides across the x axis, it affects um, all of these objects, these three objects. So um, basically, they're simple cogs. I didn't even, I didn't texture them or anything or give them teeth, but I just kind of just so you can see the uh, the turning motion. I turned down the the thong. So, not thong, thong. So don't comment about that. Okay. So basically, as it moves across the y, the x, sorry, each of these gets turned uh, at a different rate in a different direction, opposite directions. So this one's going to the going away from us towards us, which pushes this one away. So you kind of have to know a bit of common sense and physics. And math. If you want to get this perfect, you need math. So, let me just show you the espresso. Here we have the this simple little setup. So this is what it looks like in espresso. Now, don't be too um, how should I say it? Overwhelmed. Don't don't let this overwhelm you. I think is what I'm trying to say. Basically, it's quite simple. The controller, one object, two object, three object, four object, which are these four down here. The rest is all part of the frame, which is irrelevant. And then in between these uh, four objects, we have range mappers. So basically, this takes um, a unit, uh, a, uh, what's it called, a radian, so it takes a radian, which is basically a number or a decimal, and it turns that into degrees. So if we click on this, we will see that it pops up down here. So we have input range, radians, output range, degree. So basically it's doing a little conversion um, with a ratio. So for every one centimeter, maybe it will turn let's say 30 degrees or 60 degrees you can choose what that ratio is you can have a one-to-one -one, but if you did that it would not re look realistic here so I actually had to play around until it actually um, looked real like so so let's get rid of this espresso tag from the controller object and uh, we will start it again oops I didn't mean to do that just trying to delete it. Delete, 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 delete. There we go. So now we move this and nothing happens. What we're going to do is right click 
on it, go into Cinema 4D Tags, and all the way down at the bottom you're going to see a little Expresso tag, and a window's going to pop up. So what you want to do here is actually drag that object into here. I know that's kind of stupid, but you just have to drag it into itself in a way. And then we're going to select each of these in uh, a certain order. So I'm just going to go from left to right, which is cog 1, then cog 2, which is the thin one, and cog 4, or, or cog 3, 1, 2, and 3. So just position those out. Now what we're going to do is go in, right click on the gray space, new node, expresso, calculate, and down here to range mapper, like so. And we're actually going to copy paste that, one, two, yeah, just three times. And now I'm going to explain a bit of how these works. So the blue, you're going to see that they have two little sides on each object or each node as they're called, they have two sides. They have a drive, a driving and a drive side. So blue is driving or driven, so basically anything connecting to it will drive it, will drive that um, value. So basically by clicking here you can go into basic properties, you can see colors, you can change, like you could change a position to a value in red and change the color of the actual object. You can uh, change coordinates so you can go from let's say uh, a degree to a certain position on the z-axis you know you can do anything this is really cool when uh, my teacher Kai took, showed me this I was just I just laughed because I just I couldn't believe it was this easy Kai Peterson yes he is my teacher so we have input output, input, output, input, output. So what we're going to do is we're going to start our controller. So we're going to go to the driving side. Yeah, driving. I don't know. This is really, you're going to, I'm going to get mixed up. So you're going to go to the driving side and it's going to drive the, the first cog. So this is going to drive the first cog. So we just, just left click up here on the um, red and we're going to go to coordinates global position and X which is this way horizontal I'm going to drag that down into input and then we're going to left click on the blue of the first cog go to coordinates global rotation and I believe it's H I'm not sure we're going to drag from the output circle to the global rotation circle and in theory, if I move this, uh, yeah, there we go. So now we have the first, the first cog moving. But as you can see, it's a bit too fast. So I actually have a written down and a post-it on my wall. The numbers. So we're going to change input range. I'm just going to hide this now. The input range, we're going to set that to radians the output range to degrees so basically um, the radians on the x-axis and the degrees of this rotation so that's just going to help the uh, help the I don't know system work out what this means down here and give us an accurate reading so the first one is 1 and 10 no, no, 20, 10, and 1, and 2. So now we have a, a bit more controlled. It's nice and slow. So that's nice. Now, one thing I like to do is actually protect this from moving on any other axis, because sometimes you might grab it, and uh, it might go off in a weird direction. So a good little tip is to right click on the object you want to protect go into cinema 4d tags and then down here there is a tag called protection I already have it on so here you can see that I've checked off the X position so I can only drag it in the X if I were to uh, uncheck the Y I would also be able to go in the Y so it's 
cool little tip for you guys. Keep your projects neat. All right, so now we have the first one spinning. Uh, we're actually going to go back into the Espresso and hook up the second and third one. So we'll double click, left click on the driving side of the first cog, coordinates, rotation, H, drag that down into the input, and we don't actually have anything set here, so we're going to right click here, coordinates, Blue rotation H. Sorry, I just blanked out there. I didn't know what I was doing. Okay. Go back into the driving global rotation. Whoops. Sorry, my bad. Global rotation H. Drag it down. The driven side. Global rotation H. All right. So now we have it all connected. Oh, not here. Um, next thing we have to do uh, is set up the ratios, the dependencies or whatever. So we're just going to go into there, set this to radians, this one to degrees. Now if your setup isn't working for what a re whatever reason, uh, make sure you have these set because sometimes that can uh, screw up with the, with the numbers and it will just make one spin really fast or whatever. So make sure you have all of these three range mappers to radians and degree before leaving a comment saying my video sucks. So, just set that to zero, then 2.5. This is on the second mapper, so input lower, set it to zero, upper, input upper, 2.5, output lower, one, and output upper, negative 360 degrees. Now don't ask me why these numbers, I just was playing and they worked, so I used them. So now we can see that, if we spin up so I can see this thing. Now they're kind of going at a more reasonable place pace, and it also actually seems to um, be spinning oneself, so it kind of does look realistic in a way. Sorry if I seem a bit boring or bored, it's just it's kind of late, having a long week, so yeah. Alright, so that's looking pretty good. Now let's just finish up with the third one, like so. Input, radians, output, degree, and down here on um, input upper, or lower, sorry. We're just going to put one, input upper, 18, and then zero, I believe this is 360. I'm not sure about this. I left a number off on the post it, and I'm not sure. Okay, let's see if this works. There we go, yeah, it's working. All right, sweet. I guessed right. So now we have all three actually spinning as if it were an actual machine with real physics. So that's a cool way of just setting up a Expresso tag, really simple to achieve something pretty cool, I think, in my opinion. And uh, it's actually surprisingly easy. Once you guys start messing around, you can download the project file and just mess around with the tags and whatever. You can do some pretty interesting stuff. And I'd actually, I'd love if you guys post your uh, just respond with videos of like you're messing around with Expresso. That would be really cool. I'd be interested in seeing that. So yeah, see you later guys.